Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. You might wonder why are we here today? I want you to single yourself out and know it's because of you. I can't hear you. You will not be lost in the crowd. God will spot you out. Highlight you. Lift you up. And you will have, you already have potential. But we're going to do something with that potential. That that potential will increase, go higher, fly higher, and get to where God has destined you to be. Let the youth say, Amen. Amen. Father, we come at this special moment. And we're asking that all of heaven, with your power, with your authority, will emancipate, will deliver, will save, will heal, will release everyone here today. Lord, let this moment be the moment of developing unlimited potential in everyone in Jesus name confirm it in every life in Jesus name I pray God bless you you can sit down now as we come to this session I pick up the word potential what's your heart inside you in your brain, in your mind, in your spirit, in your guts. That word potential is common to everyone. It's like common sense, but common sense is not commonplace. People have common sense. I they never use that sense. I come to potential. Now potential, there is number one, unidentified potential. I don't even know I have. I have not discovered, I have not discerned. It is one, unidentified. It's like it's not there. Number two, there is also unfocused potential the potential is there but i do not focus it on the ladder that will take me up there is also untrained potentials just like we all have legs but because our legs are not trained like the legs of the athlete we will not be able to run as fast as the athlete. And his legs are not better than yours, stronger than yours, only because they are trained. That's why it's able to go forth in those legs, with those legs, and win awards. Number four, there are potentials that are not channeled, unchanneled potentials. Think about water, the water in the sea, in the ocean, not channeled to come and serve us. It does you personally no good, although we know it's there. We have to channel and we have to create a pipe there and get it to your place of precedence on channeled potential the people have potential i have brain i have iq i have whatever but it is on channeled 
There is unconnected potential. Look at that potential there, just hanging in the free air. And it is not connected with anything or with anyone. That unchanneled potential, unconnected potential, will not get us where we ought to be. There is unexposed potential. The potential is there, the person is there, but it doesn't have any exposure. And because there is no exposure, it's just there. You'll think that the people that climb the ladders in the world, you will see they're higher than I, they're higher than you. No, it is because they're exposed. And because the uh, channel is there, the exposure is there, that is why they get to where they have gone. We come today to turn everything around. God will turn you around. You know, when I talk, when I speak, when I preach, I like to have the response from my audience so that I will know that what I'm saying is sinking in to you there. Are you there? Is it sinking in? Yes. Now, what do we do? What does God want to do? Here you are. Look at a great potential sitting down there. But it's unidentified. But it is undiscovered. But it is undiscerned. Look at the great potential sitting down there, but it's unexposed, untrained, uneducated. What do we do with this potential? Where are we going? And what are we going to do with that potential sitting down there so that I can take him with the help of God to the top of the mountain in your life and in your career? It will happen. Amen. For you, Amen. to you, Amen. it will happen. Amen. Why? How? What stages do we go through that will make that happen in your life? Number one, you recognize undeniable potential. You begin to tell yourself, I have, I am, I can, I will, I do, I perform. You see, you have to identify and you have to bring out. And if they used to say, <laughs> don't blow your trumpet. When some young people tell me, if I don't blow my trumpet, nobody else will blow it. You have to have undeniable potential that you will not deny. You will know I have. You will know I can. And you will know I will. Number two is the unconfined potential. There are people that make prisons for themselves. They confine themselves. They say, so far and no more. They say, I can get to the first rung of the ladder, but no more. Why? Unconfined potential. As you come here today, the Lord wants you to understand, number one, undeniable potential. Number two is unconfined potential. And then number three is unequaled potential. Nobody else in the world has my fingerprints. Nobody else in the world has your fingerprints. Nobody else in the world is exactly like you. Even twins, they become different in life. Because each one says, yes, my twin brother, 
my twin sister has potential, but I'm going to so develop my potential, it will become unequal potential. It's in the decision. It is in the focus that you make of yourself. And you say, my potential will be undeniable potential, unconfined potential, unequal, unparalleled potential. You need to say it for yourself. And now, you know, when we're walking and we're moving and we're going on, it's the potential that drives us on. You have a drive. You have the driver within. How do you keep on doing it? Unstoppable potential. Unstoppable potential that the wind will blow. The storm may come. The trials may come. The difficulties and challenges may come. But my boy, my daughter there, it comes to everyone. Difficulties, challenges that will try to stop and try to tell you you can not. It is the kind of potential that you have. Unstoppable potential that leads you to where you are going to get to. I will get there. I will get there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. Now, you see the brain we have, all the connections there. I don't know whether you've studied the brain. Most people don't study the brain. There are things that we introduce into our lives that in local slang, local language scatters the brain. What it means is where the part of the brain for sight, the part of the brain for thinking, a part of the brain for learning, a part of the brain for retention. And when we take in those hard drugs and we think the things will stimulate us, it scatters the brain. It disconnects the brain we're not able to have. And we're not able to think. We're not able to get to what we ought to get to. That's why you have an unblemished potential. That nothing comes in. And nothing affects you. That makes your brain not to think right. Your eyes not to look right. Your ears not to hear right. And the vision you have not to be very bright. Your brain, your mind, your potential will be unblemished. I was waiting for an amen there. And then we have on irreversible potential. A potential you cannot erase. There is a kind of disease that comes to people as they are getting older and older, not only really old in age. Not, and we're not talking about years, we're talking about their mind is old. Their bones are old. Their brain old. Their vision old. And they cannot think afresh that this is the mountain I wanted to climb when I was younger. And now the potential is like a race. But you came here today so that the potential you have will be on erasable potential in Jesus' name. Give me lively amen. Now, it's the combination of all that that now leads us to unlimited potential. When you say something is unlimited, that means that you have the drive, 
you have the vision, you have the desire, you have the resources, you have the drive within you, and you have unlimited potential that makes a person unlimited person. I want to talk to you today on divine emancipation for undeniable progress. And I'm going to talk to you in person, you in particular, because I've been watching you after this day. And after this day, you will make it. You will more than make it. You will arise. I said you will arise with a new energy, with a new strength, with a new power, with a new drive, you will arise and you will achieve in Jesus' name. And let me tell you about somebody. He had potential. The potential was locked up. He had potential. The potential was thrown away. He had potential. The potential was sold out. Sold out to slavery. And they thought that potential will never come up. Now, it is not what people do to you that matters. It is what you do with what they do to you that matters in life. It's not what people think of you that matters. It is what you think of what they think of you that matters. It is not what people make of you that matters. It is what you make of what they did to you that matters. I'm looking at Psalm 105, reading from verse 18. In Psalm 105 verse 18, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. They wanted to silence that potential, crush that potential, destroy that potential, get rid of that potential, and it, it became a confined potential. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, until the time that his word came, your time has come. Amen. Until the time, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Look at verse 20 there. The king sank and loosed him. You'll be loosed. Amen. By the power of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, you'll be released in Jesus' name. Amen. The past will be forgotten. Amen. A new future, a new dream will come in Jesus' name. Amen. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. 21. In 21, he made him lord of his house and ruler of all the substance. Then in verse 22, it says, to bind his princess at his pleasure. And teach a senator's wisdom. Well, that was Joseph at his own time. It is now you at your own time. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. I said, what's your name? Yeah. You know, that name that they threw away, that they sold into slavery, that they sold into, they brought him from being somebody in the family to become a nobody in a foreign land. But Joseph is my brother. I said he's my brother. The same God that created him, created me. The same heaven that affirmed him, affirms you. And the same grace available for him is available for you. Amen. Your star will shine. Amen. Your road will become smooth. Amen. The resources will come to you. Amen. And the place you ought to get to, you will get there. Amen. 
They wanted him to become a non-entity, a nobody, nowhere to be found, but he became somebody. Today, destiny is smiling on you. You will become somebody. Divine emancipation for undeniable progress. Three things I'm looking at. Number one, the purpose. Number two, the power. Number three, the potential. Number one, the purpose. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. Number two, the power. Lose them that they may grow. Lose them that they may grow. We have come today to the presence of the Lord that everything that binds you, there is a decree from heaven. Lose them. Let them grow. Yeah. Number three, the potential. Lose me and I will glow. Go, grow, glow. Go, grow, glow. The purpose, the power, the potential. I congratulate you that as you give God a chance today in your life, like no time else in your life, that divine purpose from heaven will be fulfilled in your life from this day. Yeah. One, two, three, and you are there. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you climb steps before. If you have not climbed the ladder, you climb the stairs of a house. And you can go slowly, but you'll get there. Amen. Put one leg there, another leg up. A few inches at a time. And by the grace of God, if you don't look back, if you don't look down, if you don't depreciate yourself, and you know you're going up, 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 I will get there. I will get there. Nobody can decide for me. I will get there. Number one, the purpose. Lose him and let him go. I want you to look at John chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 43 here. And when he thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. That was divine power, divine manifestation. He was dead, and Christ, the giver of life, came and gave him life. Lazarus, come forth. The voice of heaven will come to you today. And if you are there, vision dead, Mind dead, brain dead, dream dead, and even the thing you have, the skill you have, and the things that makes us to rise up, everything dead, a divine voice is coming to you today. Lazarus, come forth. Look at verse 44. It says, and he that was dead, was dead, was dead. Past tense, dead, came forth, bound, hand and foot of grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus says unto them, loose him and let him go. Traveling through the roads of life. I have seen people, they are born again. 
They have come to life eternal. The Lord has given them the heart that knows the Lord. And they say, I have eternal life. No doubt. I have the life that Christ has given. No doubt. I am a follower of Christ. No doubt. Jesus gave Lazarus life. A new life. Eternal life. Abundant life. A life that shows him is not in the grave anymore. But his hands were still bound with the grave clothes. His feet bound with the grave clothes. And the face bound with a napkin. There are people who are born again. There are people who have eternal life. There are people, they read the Bible. There are people, they feel the presence of Christ in them. But the feet are bound. They're not going anywhere. They're not running anywhere. Their hands are bound. They're not working anything. They're not producing anything. And their face bound. They don't have any vision. They have sight. They don't have vision. They have instruction. They don't have understanding. They have eyesight. They don't have insight. That's why we came here today and Jesus, after performing that miracle, said, Loose him and let him go. Today, you have come. The Lord will lose you. What does that mean? Let him go. Let him go. Number one, let him go free. That's what happened to Joseph. Let him go free. No more a prisoner, no more a confined person, no more somebody just staying somewhere, just having a dream without any demonstration. Let him go free. Number two, let him go forward. The children of Israel were at the Red Sea and they have come already out of Egypt. It appears they now, they had gone free from the bondage of Egypt. But now look at the Red Sea before them. And look at the mountains around them. And look at the Egyptian army behind them. And they cried as said, everything is finishing here. Maybe that's what you thought. You are not finished yet. I said, you are not finishing yet. And God said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell them to go forward. And I come to tell you here today that the purpose of setting you free, the purpose of Christ saying, loose him and let him go, is that number one, from this afternoon, you go free. Number two, you go forward. Number three, you go forth. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 55 and verse 56. Look at Goliath standing confident before Saul and before the army of Saul. And nobody could touch him, confront him. And he was not just a problem to Saul. It was a problem to the nation of Israel. He himself said so. And then somebody like you, his name is David. He came and he went forth. And today, as you come, the problems that other people complain about, the problem that other people write about, the problem that other people cry about, you will become the solution. Because, because you go forth. Go. You see him and let him go. You are there today. And the Lord comes to tell you that you will move 
your nation, and those of us in Nigeria, you are the candidate to move our nation forward. Yeah. Do you really believe that? Yeah. David did not have any credentials to join the army of Israel. David did not have any political position to release and deliver the nation of Israel, yet he was the man. And yet, you are the man. You are the woman. Lose him and let him go. Let him go forth. Now, I come to number four, and this is in Joshua chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. The children of Israel were about to enter the land of promise. You are about to enter your land of promise. And then the Lord said, Joshua, tell those children of Israel, the priests will carry the ark of the covenant and they will make space between them and the ark and then they will go after go after that's how they entered into the land of promise number four go after i want to ask you a question do you have anything you're pursuing are you going after anything any dream any project any idea any educational level any professional training are you going after anything or it is i am saved i am true i am born again i am true i know christ i know him too and quite a number of people know him but they are not going after anything let the river flow and let the passion flow from inside you that there is a goal there is an ideal that at the top of the mountain go after that's why we're here that you will identify the mountain you must climb you must identify the training you must have you will identify the company you will establish you will identify the level you will reach and go after number five is to go through to go through that one you find in Isaiah chapter 62 verses 10 to 12 going through I'm going through I am going through sometimes there's a mountain before you if you cannot fly over tunnel through that you say nothing will hinder me uh, have you seen some motorways that are built mostly overseas it goes through the sea the sea is there and if they could not make a bridge they will tunnel through in your life any river there in your life any blockage there in your life any mountain there in your life any impossibility there if god has given the brain the mind the wisdom the research ability to those people to tunnel through a mountain and tunnel through a deep river god will give you your own localized wisdom there you will go through you'll not be the kind of person that will you know, just sit down nobody is helping me nobody is taking care of me i have parents but i live like an orphan nobody comes to offer anything to me you will stand up and the lord will lead you to the financier it will lead you to the helper but if you don't stand up if you don't ask somebody if you don't contact somebody if you don't check on the internet if you don't check where the scholarship will come from if you are just there you have computer you are not using it you have facility you are not using it how will it come but you will 
go through. I will go through. You know, Jesus wanted to cross from this side to that side of the lake. There was somebody on the other side that needed his ministry. Another one needed his mercy. Another one needed his ministration. And so he told the disciples, he said, let us, number six, go over. Go over. You see, progress is in the movement. If you're just static, if you're just there, born again, child of God, God is your creator, and Christ is your helper, and with him that believeth, all things are possible, but you're just sitting down there. You must, from today, you will go over. Amen. I will go over. Tell the person by your side there, look at them eyeball to eyeball, I will go over. <laughs> look at that brother, he's shy, he's shy, he's looking down and saying, I will go over. Commit yourself and look at the person eyeball to eyeball and said, I will go over. <laughs> you will go over. You know, if you told somebody yesterday I'm going over, when he sees you today, it's likely to ask you, have you taken any step? Are you going over? Are you still under the bridge? Are you still confined somewhere there? When you tell another person where you're going, how you are going, and when you are going, and you commit yourself, when they see you and they ask you, you will say pointedly, practically, purposefully, by the grace of God today, I am not where I was yesterday. Say it for yourself. Going number seven, number, number one, go free. Number two, go forward. Number three, go forth. Number four, go after. Number five, go through. Number six, go over. Number seven, go up. Go up. You don't have any other direction in life. The only direction you have. The only direction you have go up. Lock all the other doors. The doors, the friends that call you to the past, let's go back. Lock that door. The one that says, let's go down, down the drain. Lock that door. But the only door after this day, that is open to you now. If the door where? Oh. You will go up. Yeah. And if Jesus tarries, I will see you again. Yeah. I will ask you, the Lord set you free on that last Saturday of July 2022. And he told you the direction to go. I will ask you, where are you now? The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the purpose. Lose him and let him go. Number two now. We're looking at number two. And number two, the power. Lose them and let them grow. You will grow. Amen. The young must grow. Amen. God desires it. The angels celebrate it. And we who are your mentors, we are looking for it. And the Lord will fulfill the desires of our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. For you. Amen. For you. Amen. 
I said for you. And the Lord will put a testimony in your mouth. L look at this. Look at this. Luke chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 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 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, man, boy, girl, professional, whoever you are, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Amen. If you accept that personally, say amen. amen. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. You will glorify God. Amen. Say, I will glorify God. Now, look at this woman. The Lord saw her. And I want to tell you, the Lord has seen you today. When the Lord saw her, the Lord saw her in infirmity, a spirit of infirmity, and she was bowed down, and she could not lift up herself. What happens to a man like that? Bowed down, could not lift up herself, and could not see a world of possibilities. So bowed down. And the only thing she could see is the little circle of her environment because she was bowed down because of that infirmity. And Christ looked at her. She could not see the wide world that the Almighty has created for enjoyment, usefulness to that white world you bowed down. Because of infirmity. Now, as I read that, I said, do people have infirmity? Are they so bowed down that they couldn't lift up themselves? Are there people I'll be ministering to and they are bound with infirmity? At first, I said, normally young people, as they come to the meeting, they are healed and hearty, and they seem to be full of life, and they are energetic. And the Lord said, no, that's not what we are talking about. They have infirmity that they need to be set free from. I said, what? What kind of infirmity? And he told me, I is iniquity. We are bound by the cord of iniquity. And we associate with men and women, boys and girls of iniquity. And the result and the consequence of iniquity binds us. We cannot see anything. The only thing we see that interests us is cigarettes, or marijuana, or beer, or alcohol or sex, or living under the bridge. We're bound with iniquity. That the only thing we can think about as we're bound down is the iniquity all around us. I, from that infirmity, is iniquity. And it's negligence. Negligence. We even neglect to take care of our own, pers of our own person. We, we don't take care of anything belonging to us. We're careless and indifferent and negligent. And it is a great infirmity. The books are there, but, you know, the eyes will not read the books except you give the eyes the command. Read the books. 
do the assignment, get to the library, do the exam, prepare for a bright future. Our infirmity is number one, I iniquity. Number two, negligence. We know I ought to fill that form. I procrastinate, I neglect. I know I have to prepare for that exam. And, you, and some few weeks before the exam, we're negligent. We're only looking at, you know, the play, play, and the, you know, whatever it is we're doing on the internet. And, and we have our phone every, everywhere. And we're scrolling and we're looking. And the real thing we need to do, we have the infirmity of negligence. And then in infirmity, if there is filthiness, we feel the our language feel thee, our companions feel thee, and our um, every environment feel thee. Everything is feel thee. And we're so used to that, and we're so glued to that, we're bowed down. How can we achieve with the infirmity of iniquity and negligence and filthiness? And then I is idleness, idleness, idleness. We're just loafing here and there. If anybody asks you, what have you done today? To show, to demonstrate, and to make visible the potential you have, you'll have to confess I've not done anything today. What did you do last week? This week, I didn't do anything. Now, the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. Put it another way. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. And if there is idleness in this area, There'll be idleness in that other area. Dispel infirmity. When you have iniquity, negligence, filthiness, and you have idleness, your life will spell infirmity. And how are you going to make it to the top? If that infirmity bows you down, R is rebellion. Now, there are people that say, you know, I'm born again. I'm not rebellious. I'm born again. There's no rebellion in me. You know what rebellion is? When somebody higher than you are, a father, a mother, a brother, a teacher, a principal, a lecturer, a director, a foreman, anyone above you. When he says, do this. Now, your people, they don't like to think about the value of what they are told. All they think about is... If they say go right, just to prove I'm a tough guy. Just to prove... I don't just listen to anybody like that. I run my life. If they say go right, I go left. If they say go up, I go down. Just for the sheer activity or action of saying, I will not listen to anybody on earth. That's what is called rebellion. My, my brother, that, that's what makes us to be backward. And the people trying to help us go there, move there, shift a little bit, change that action, that character a little bit and go this way is the rebellion that makes us to say no and they want us to go up and here I come. I am not a judge. I am not a person looking for somebody to arrest I'm not looking for anybody to condemn. All I'm looking for is to give you a helping hand and lift you up and get you to the mountain. Amen. I see in you what you cannot see. 
I sense in you what you cannot sense. And I say, allow me, please, to say what I want to say. My father, earthly father, used to say, I didn't go to school, but I spent every funding I have to make you get to where I never got to. He saw himself in a way in me, and what he couldn't achieve, he said, I will spend everything on you, that you will get to where I never got to. And by the grace of God, grace of God, grace of God, I made it. And since that time, I took that from my father, and I come to all my children spiritually, and I say, what could I have done if I had a message like this for unlimited potential? What could I have done? And the Lord said this, 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 and I said, Lord, but I am... 81 years of age now. And then the Lord say, go tell them what your daddy told you. That where I have not got into, you will get there. That the things I've been dreaming about and the things I've been envisioning and I've been saying, I, I will climb that, I will do that, I will go there. And now age is saying, you're no more a teenager. Pass it on. Pass it on. Pass it on. And I come to pass it on to you. You will get there. I said you will get there. But you know, rebellion stops us from getting the infirmity. Emma, mischief. Mischief. Now, when we say mischief, you may say, I'm not a mischievous person. You know, you leave the boy in the sitting room. And he's looking around, what will I do? And he sees the wall clock. He pulls that wall clock down. And then he begins to dismantle. Dismantle. After dismantling, you cannot bring it back again. What have you done? That's what we call mischief just doing something no meaning no purpose and it's not going to achieve anything it's the infirmity that makes us stay at the back and we're not making progress but today the lord will change your life i is incorrigibility Incorrigibility. What does that mean? That's a big one. I'm sure you know it. It means the nature, the attitude of always refusing correction. If I do that, he will think it's because he said it that I did it. I will not do it now. And then over time, you forget what you said you'll do later. And somebody says, what are you doing there? Why don't you get up and do something for heaven's sake? I'll not get up. I'll act and see if I didn't hear. They call your name. Samuel. Samuel. And you are there. But you'll not even turn your neck. And you are there until they come to say, I was calling you. Did you hear? Ah. And then when they tell you what to do, you just flap down. There, nothing. And when that becomes habitual in your life, remember what I said, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Incorrigibility. And then T there is transgression. No go area, that's where you like to go. Don't cross that fence, that's what I like to cross. Don't take that bottle that's poison there, 
because mommy said it, that's the bottle I'm going to take and drink. And don't uh, go to that street. It is dangerous in the night. That's exactly what I am going to do. T, transgression. And then Y, yoke. Yoke. It becomes a yoke on you. That now, when you get up and you saw your classmates primary school or your classmates in the secondary school and so want to say, what have I been doing? I've been sleeping. I've not been doing anything. I've been going the wrong direction. I want to rise up now. The yoke is too tight on your neck. And the yoke is too heavy on your person that to move forward now becomes like an impossibility. But the Lord has brought you here that he will deliver you today. Lose him, number one, and let him go. Number two, lose him and let him grow. And all these infirmities, the Lord, as we present everything to the Lord today, the Lord will wash everything away. Your heart will be free. Your heart will be clean. Amen. Your sledge will be free. Amen. For the Lord to write a new goal, a new identity, a new ideal on your sledge in Jesus' name. Amen. Let somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Number three, number three, the potential, lose me and I will glow. Say that. Loosed by Christ through conversion with conviction you can have unlimited potential, unrestricted potential, unstoppable potential. And from today, as you come in the hands of the Lord, the Lord will lose you. You'll go. You'll grow. You'll glow. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Yeah. And whatsoever, whatsoever, whosoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yeah. Earth and heaven, heaven and earth, Supernatural and natural will combine together and lose you today. Amen. What does that mean? It means to be loosed from sickness to healing and health. Christ has the power. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is your day. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Will lose you from sickness to healing and health. Number two, it lose you from suffering to a harmless help. Harmless help. Pastor, I didn't know there is harmful hell. Of course, there is. There are people that will come to you. I will help you. And true, true. They will help you. But they help you to plunge you into a gang. That's harmful help. They help you to invite you to a cult. That's a harmful help. They help you so that they can defile, degrade, destroy your body. That is harmful health. But as the Lord takes hold of your life today, it will help you. Yeah. Harmless health. From sorrow, number three, to 
habitual happiness. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't need happiness. All I need is success. You don't understand. When you are not happy, you're sorrowful. When you are not happy, you are confused. When you are not happy, you are not connected. When you are not happy, you feel rejected. When you are not happy, you feel the whole world is pressing down on you. You need happiness. Not a momentary happiness, but habitual happiness. It will take your sorrow away. And it will give you habitual happiness. Number four, it will set you free. It will release you and move you on from sinfulness to heart holiness. Heart holiness. Somebody help me shout, heart holiness. What's that? When your heart does not condemn you before God, when your heart is free to come before God without any shame of what you've done, without any accusation of Satan's sin. You of all people, you're asking for the promise of God. How about this and how about this? The Lord will shut up the devil's mouth out of your life in Jesus' name. And then you come in the presence of God without any conscience of sin because he has cleansed your heart. And he has given you heart holiness. Number five, from slavery to the highest height. Slavery. That's what God did for Joseph. He took him from that slavery, from that cringing, and from being less than a human being. You know, there are people that go about, I'm saved. They're introverts. I am saved. They cannot look up at people's faces. I am saved. They cannot ask questions from the people that will give them relevant, important solution and answer. But when the Lord saves your personality, it saves you from slavery and you'll get to the highest height. I'm talking to somebody there. Highest height. Highest height. Don't say, don't say, I want to be like the pastor. Ah, you have more resources, more potential than that. You'll get higher. You'll become greater. Spiritually. Academically. Socially. Financially. You will go up in Jesus' name. But the Lord needs to totally deliver us. He'll deliver us from shallowness to heroic honors. Shallowness. What do you have? This, this, this. I have a packet of biscuits. What do you have? I have a glass of water. What do you have? I have a good bed to sleep on. What do you have? I have enough food to eat, my friend. If that's all you have. That's too shallow. That's superficial. You want to go to a height that the eagles have not even been able to get to. Your life will be a heroic life. Your life will be an honorable life. Your life will be a life of achievement in Jesus' name. What do you have? I have beauty. That's all you have. That's not of your making. That's daddy and mommy that gave you that beauty. That's the way you are born. What do you have? I am tall. That one daddy and mommy gave that. What do you have? I am quick in walking and running. That's what daddy and mommy gave. I'm asking you, what do you have? You came to this world and what nobody else gave you. You have developed your potential and here you are now that you are a unique specimen coming out of the mighty hand of God, you will have something. I said you will have something. 
Uh, what will I have if I'm not a hero among many equals? What will I have if I'm not a hero among all the people that know me, the spirit and the, and the skill and the energy and the power to become a hero in your generation? The Lord will grant unto you. He'll take you from shallowness. He'll give you heroic honors in Jesus' name. He'll take you from servanthood and take you to habitation in heaven. 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 Where the angels are singing heaven. Where Christ is enthroned heaven where god governs the whole of the universe heaven where the streets are streets of gold heaven where there's no satan to touch up there's no spirit to torment and where there is nothing that will hinder your everlasting 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 joy habitation in heaven it will give unto you in jesus name you will not be scrubbing the floors of the world. Tonight, but today, this afternoon, the Lord is going to turn everything around. You will be scrubbing floor and pushing the cart and all that. And every time it's the floor and the floor you are looking at. But from that shallowness, from that servant, from that slavery, the Lord will take you to a heroic, heroic height. And you will be there. I said you will be there. You will get higher than this platform where I am standing. And those who do not see you today because you are in the crowd, you will become a unique person. Identified. Uplifted. A mad man, a mad woman, the hero of a generation, the hero among many equals, the Lord will give you an upward lead from today in Jesus' name. Lucy, let him go. Lucy, let him go. Lucy, let him go. You see there? Is she there? Why don't you stand up? And make this moment, make this time, a special time in heaven that the hand of the Lord will come on you. Heaven has given the order and the decree, loose him, loose her. Let him go. Tell the Lord, loose me from my infirmity. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord that iniquity will hinder your upward movement. That negligence will hinder your upward movement. That filthiness, fornication will hinder your upward movement. Tell him that indolence will hinder your upward movement. Tell him that rebellion will hinder your upward movement. Tell him that mischief will hinder your upward movement. Tell him, tell him, tell him. He wants to make a new person, a new boy, a new girl, a new young man out of you. Tell him that incorrigibility will keep you down. Transgression will keep you down. Yokes will keep you down. Offer yourself unto the Lord and let this time, this moment, be the moment of losing him, letting him go. Letting him grow. Letting him glow. Tell the Lord. The Lord is here now. In his power. In his love. 
His Majesty, you say, to turn your life around, Lucy, 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 let him go, let him grow, let him glow. Any limitation in your life? The Lord is now setting you free. Accept. 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 Believe. Believe. And say, yes, Lord. I know that this is the day of my total emancipation. Confess it. It's done. And then go forth from here with new courage, new commitment. And say, Lord, I know. I know I'm a different person from this moment on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Any hero of honor there today? Amen. Amen. Raise up that hand. The Lord will make a unique, unstoppable, unlimited person out of you. Amen. No matter at what level you are now. That's a higher height. Amen. You will get there. Amen. The power of heaven will help you. Amen. Spiritually. Amen. Naturally. Amen. Socially. Amen. Financially. Amen. Academically. Amen. Professionally. Amen. Whatever height you have got to, you are going to get to a higher height in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. A great moment, marked by heaven. I pray for everyone, leaving iniquity behind, negligence behind, filthiness, fornication behind. I pray for everyone, leaving idleness behind. I pray for everyone, leaving rebellion behind. I pray for everyone, leaving mischievous acts behind. I pray for everyone, leaving incorrigibility behind. I pray for everyone, leaving transgressions and yokes behind. Set everyone free. Forgive all the sins of the past. Set everyone free. And Lord, now, free. 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 To move forward. To go forward. To go after. To go over. And to go up. Effective, achieve that in every life in Jesus' name. Make the nobody that has no place on the map, make him, make her the somebody that has a place, verifiable place significant place an important place in our world in Jesus name 
take the nature of the victim out of everyone and the power to be victorious the power to achieve the power to go on without getting tired lord inject everyone with the injection of heaven that will make them unstoppable until they get to their mountain top. and lord will say everyone here they'll go forth they grow beyond their limitation they will glow like shiny stars sicknesses gone sorrow gone suffering are gone shame of the past gone slavery gone shallowness gone lord i pray the servanthood that keeps people down that are not able to go to the height of heaven's dream take it away from every life everyone now the freedom has come to you you have received you will manifest you will go you will grow you will glow and you will not stay you will not dwell where darkness is you will move to the place where the sun is shining the brightest lord confirm it in every life thank you lord for the answer in jesus name